hello, good evening, everyone, or rather, good afternoon, everyone. Okay, so you have had your exams, your practical exams, uh, I think, uh, beginning of this month, right? Or rather, oh, sorry, last month, yeah. And then uh, the actual SPM is coming soon. You've also had your practical, uh, your uh, trial exam. So today, I would like to go to uh, some questions which are possible to be, uh, to come up during the coming uh, next month's SPM, Fujian Armory Science. So again, uh, what I concentrate on are those experiments which are something that is uh, easily managed and can be done in 40 minutes. So this is your main guide. guide lah, okay? If you were to try to find out, try to, what they call that, uh, uh, sort of like, find out what kind of, what, you sort of like narrow down to the experiments. The first criteria is, is this experiment able to be conducted in 40 minutes? If the answer is yes, it's possible that you'll come out. Okay, and then number two is, even if it comes out, you can be assured that it will not be exactly as what is in the textbook. Because what they will do is they will try to uh, test you in a sense that they will you, they, you are required to apply what you already know. Okay, so that means uh, you need to know the theory. All you need to do is to know the theory and actually you will be able to answer the question. So what I advise you to do is study back all the theories about experiments that you have learned in your form 4 and form 5 syllabus. Okay, and uh, if your theory is very solid, all right, any experiment you'll be able to do. Okay, so let me say hi to my uh, viewers. Carries, good afternoon. The Amar, okay, good afternoon and uh, welcome to, I don't know whether it's the first time you're joining me. But it's the first time I see your name, yeah? Okay, Emily Cho. Okay, good afternoon. Yes, I know both of you, huh? Carrie's and Emily. Okay, so I'm going to share screen now. So, oh, sorry, yeah? I Yes, okay, so here it is. So I'm, once you see the question, you know what topic is. So I purposely do not want to give the topic, but it is something that is doable, yeah? And it's something that is easy, but of course, they will play around the question. So if they play around the question, it's based on your what you call that how good is your theory so if you revise all the theories you should be able to answer okay diama this is my first time teacher okay all right thank you very much i hope you won't be your last time yeah okay so i'm going to uh present to you this is form four topic so form four as you know there are many experiments in form four okay so this is a, one of the experiments that i'll go through with you so next week i'm going to do a form five topic okay because we do not know what question will come up you need to equip yourself with all the possibility. And then we only have three weeks, huh? After that, yours is going to be your Ujian Army size. So I'll do, do today from four and next week another from five. And perhaps another week will be either from four or from five topic. Lah, all right. So I have not decided yet. Okay, so now let's look at the question. So I will not go through the technique manjawa because I've already done technique manjawa for the past two years. I've given uh videos, I mean I've done a uh, live right many times on Uja Amali science about the technique manjawa. that means it's general if you see this question how are you going to answer if you have hypothesis question what is the way to answer hypothesis and if it's prediction three marks your first point you must say what and the second and third point you must say what all right that i've already covered so if you're not seen all this all right all the technique manjawa, please look at the playlist in my channel you will find the uh, the video is there all right, so I'm going to, in this year, this year of Uja Amali Science, I'm going through the question. All right, so I've devised a certain question, uh, these questions on my own. So I would like to present to you and I hope that you will be able to uh, learn something from here and equip yourself to answer the question if it does come up. Okay, let's look at the first question. Okay, so this is activity of enzyme. Okay, enzyme activity. So this this is actual question. I mean a question now, all right? A question that I've devised now, right? Amylase is an enzyme which is effective at certain pH. Okay. So now from this statement, you already know that you need to see the you're going to investigate the effect of pH on the enzyme activity. All right. Okay. Sorry, I need to uh, switch on my uh, what now? Sorry, uh, my uh, <laughs> my charger. One minute. I don't want to die on me, yeah? All right. Let's say sorry, sorry, sorry. All right. Let's go on, yeah? Okay, next. So what's the procedure? 
So assuming this is an experiment that you don't need to plan your procedure. Don't forget, there is also experiment that you need to plan your procedure. So you need to plan a procedure. I've also mentioned in my uh, previous video how to write the procedure. Usually, procedure will come with four marks. Okay, so you go through that uh, video that I've done earlier. So I don't have time to actually redo again and again because there'll be a waste of time. So I've done that already earlier. So I'm going through a, this experiment procedure is given to you. But if you were to ask to write a procedure, usually it's about four, three to four marks. What you should write, I've already mentioned in one of the videos. Okay, now, using label paper, pay, label three test tubes A, B, and C in, and place them on a test tube. So something very simple, all right? Using a measuring cylinder, measure 5 ml of starch suspension into each test tube. Now remember, normally we don't say starch solution because starch is not soluble. So we will say starch suspension. Albumin is also a suspension. Okay, but glucose is soluble. Glucose is solution. So not something that is insoluble. It is not a solution. We call it a suspension. Okay, so this is how it looks like. Add the following solution into each test tube. So your test tubes are already ready. A, B, and C. Right, you label them. And you're supposed to manipulate the pH condition, the condition of the pH. How do you change the condition of the pH? So they'll probably ask you to put in uh, acid and, of course, alkaline. All right. So A, uh, they ask you to put in uh, amylase, 1 ml of amylase plus 1 ml of hydrochloric acid solution. Okay, you've got to measure that. And please, whatever you do, do not contaminate your uh, apparatus. If you only have one measuring cylinder, which you probably will have like, either one or two, you can't have too many, right? They don't have enough for you. Please make sure you wash it. If you want to use amylase, please make sure you use the measuring cylinder and you fill up with amylase first. Okay, then you wash it, give it a wash, and then you fill up with your hydrochloric, then you give it a wash, and then distill water and also your sodium hydroxide solution. Either it's measuring cylinder or it could be a syringe, but make sure you rinse it so that you do not contaminate your solution. Okay, so you, all this is very important. Otherwise, you get the result that is wrong. Okay, you should not have this color, but because your solution is contaminated, you will have that certain color, and that affects your uh, explanation. Okay, so one is acidate. You can see A is acidate, B is neutral, distilled water is neutral, C is uh, alkaline. So you have three conditions whereby you are looking at your amylase action on your starch suspension given three different pH conditions. Okay, so here you should know which is the best condition for amylase. Do you know? May I know your answer? Which do you suspect, which do you expect to have the highest uh, or the what they call the action of amylase to be the highest? Is it test tube A, B or C? Which one will have your result? Okay, that means your breakdown of your the digestion of so uh, this starch will be the fastest. Yeah, can I have someone to answer? Maybe Emily, Carries, uh, the Amar. Which do you expect to have the fastest rate of enzyme reaction? The amylase works the best. One is acidic, one is alkaline, and one is uh one is the neutral which one? Okay, so Carrie says B, Emily says C, uh, Frosty got, got Frosty, sorry, slightly alkaline C, the AMA says P, pH 7. Okay, right. So the correct answer is actually, uh, is neutral. Neutral. Your B should have the fastest rate of reaction. Okay, not, not alkaline. All right, this is amylase. So the condition, the optimal condition for amylase should be neutral. All right. Okay. Huh? Let me go on. So number four, how are you going to test the uh, digestion has already completed? So you need iodine. When you have starch, in order to test the presence of starch, you will need iodine. Okay. Simple, effective test. You just drop your starch into iodine. It should turn color. Okay, let me ask you again afterwards now, what is the color? Okay, so you prepare a white towel. They will give you a white towel. The best one will be the lubang. There are holes there. There are grooves there. We call it a groove pile. Then you drop 
six drops. You prepare first, siap siap, right? Put in six drops of iodine on the white tile. And then you immerse all your trees test tube with the three different condition in the water bath at 37 degrees Celsius. They may give you warm water, lah, right? And then you start your stopwatch once you immerse all of them. Okay, next. Something like this, all right? So this is how you should prepare your now make sure everything is ready you immerse it together at the same time because you do not want to have different time all right you want to start it at the same time all three of them see what is the which one will be the fastest to complete digestion of the starch okay put them together at the same time next immediately once you put it inside right you take a drop of solution from each test tube so use a dropper and pick one drop, one sample from the A, drop it onto the A. This is immediately. That means zero minute. Okay, this is considered zero minute. Once you put it in, this is the beginning. So you take a drop of the A, drop it onto the first groove. And then, of course, you uh, wash your dropper. Lah. The most ideal will give you three droppers. Lah. But if you don't have three droppers, please rinse your dropper. All right. And then you take your B, you drop it onto your B. And take the C, drop it onto your C, record your observation. So you have to be fast, lah. you can't be doing too slow because it will start digestion. Once you start the stopwatch, once you add the thing inside, it will start digestion. So you need to take it, test it immediately at zero minutes. The best you can, lah, right? Don't, don't be too slow, lah, right? Because you'll start digestion. Okay, then repeat step five. That means you, uh, not step five, lah. Ah, step six actually. You re after 20 minutes, after you test it, you leave it for 20 minutes, then you test it again. That means you take another drop of A from the A and put it onto the second part, the second row of the iodine uh, droplets, drops. Okay. After 20 minutes, you test again. A, drop one drop there. Rinse your dropper. Then B, take one drop on the B or the B. Take one drop of the C and look at the color change. Okay. Record your observation. Then, uh, after that, all right, after 20 minutes, after you record it, you need to conduct a Benedict's test. Uh, I hope you remember how to conduct Benedict's test. Huh? Benedict's test, you will be given Benedict's solution. All right, Benedict's solution, which is light blue in color, just like the, the students' uni, uh, pinafore, the girls' pinafore, light blue in color. You take one sample, about 1 ml of A and a B and C, all right, on its own. Put into a test tube, add about 1 ml of uh, Benedict, Benedict solution, a uh, Benedict reagent, and then you put in hot water, all right? You heat it up for about 5 minutes. So get ready your A, B, and C. Put in Benedict solution, and together all your three test tubes put in the hot water bath. Boil it for 5 minutes. After that, record your vision. So you see there are two observations here. Firstly, is to see the color change of your uh, starch suspension using ID. The other one, Benedict solution, is to test for presence of reducing sugar. Okay, so there are two tests here. A bit messy, lah. Normally, we'll just you know your your what you have your trial uh, SPM uh, paper. You had your this one, isn't it? Just testing your iodine only, right? Uh, this one is included Benedict's test, right? Okay, record your observation. All right, so simple experiment is doable in 40 minutes. Okay, now let's look at the question. Okay, uh, construct a table to show all your observation. Remember, there are two observations here. One is the change in the iodine color. Another one is the Benedict's test. So your table must include both observations. Okay, yeah? so let's look at the question. Question number one. All right, okay. State the hypothesis for this experiment. Okay, very easy. One of the easiest questions is to look at the hypothesis. Why is it so easy? It's easy because it is given in the aim of the experiment. Okay, look, for example, this is from the question just now. Amylase is the enzyme which is effective at certain pH. So look back at the question. Look back at your window statement there. In this experiment, you're required to determine the optimal pH for the action of enzyme or action of amylase. So here, what you can do is, because this is not a, quali a quantitative experiment, you don't have numbers, 
you don't have a what they call that you, you don't have to measure the time taken and all that you don't have to measure any values you just need to see after 20 minutes whether it is uh the digestion has already uh starch has already finished so there's no number you cannot write your hypothesis the higher the what the higher the what the higher the mv the higher the rv okay the higher the weight of um uh, enzyme digestion you don't need that all you need to do is you see what is the optimal ph now. you guess now you have got your acidic neutral alkaline you have three right you choose one which one do you think is the optimal ph for the action of amylase so that's why it goes back to your theory so just like i mentioned it should be ph7 all right so for this kind of experiment is qualitative experiment does not have any values that you need to measure right there's no how many and uh, how many you don't there's no measurement there's no value it's called there's no uh it's not quantitative experiment not a quantitative data this is a qualitative data so you just choose what do you think is the best the optimal ph for the action of enzyme is ph7 okay you don't need to have right the, the format of the higher the uh, mv the higher the rv uh, that that format is only usually for experiments that has got values that you can measure okay all right simple one mark okay construct a table to show your observation so three marks usually three marks yeah you have to construct the table yourself and you'll be looking at your mv and your rv okay that means your table should roughly look like this because there are two observations you need to look at the color of the iodine after 20 minutes and also the result of Benedict's test after 20 minutes. Okay, so where are your three marks? The first mark usually will be given at the title. The title, what is it that you are looking for? The color of iodine at how many minutes? The color of iodine at 20 minutes. The results of Benedict's test after 20 minutes. And if it's a qua quantitative data, is there should be units. Don't forget your units. Okay, how many cm? How many uh, per minutes or whatever? What is the unit? Okay, percentage or whatever. You have to have the first uh, unit. And then the other one is your MV. What did you manipulate? You manipulated three, all right? There is an acidic, there is a neutral, and there is an alkaline condition here. So this is your MV. And your RV is all your data here, all right? All this will be your RV. What did you observe? What did you get? What was the responding thing or uh, uh, variable? So color iodine at zero minute, when you drop it from the starch into your iodine, it should be blue black. Okay? Or some will put dark blue, but I would prefer to use the word blue black. Okay? Because starch reacts with iodine, you get blue black. In the beginning, all have got starch. Okay? So blue black, blue black, and blue black. All of them will have will contain starch. Okay, after 20 minutes, okay, tell me what will happen to A and the B and the C. Okay, who can answer this? Anybody? Uh, Emily? Carries? Tell me what happened to A. What happened to B? What happened to C? What's the color that you will observe after 20 minutes? A, anyone? What should the color be? assuming that it has not finished uh, it has not finished digestion because the condition is not correct the condition is not perfect acidic your am amylase does not work very well your in neutral condition your amylase will work faster and then for alkaline your amylase doesn't work very well okay so what would you expect the color of iodine to be for a b and c yes anyone Still blue black for test tube A. Okay, good answer, um, the AMA. Good answer. Because it's acidic, that means it's not so conducive, not so optimal. The, the, the condition is not so optimal for the, the reaction of breaking down. So probably, all right, there will still be blue black after 20 minutes. Okay, because it's acidic. Then what about B, AMA? Acidic to blue black. All right, you got your answer there. All right. Then uh, frosty, yeah, got frosty, correct. So, usually this kind of experiment, uh, they will have tested before. They will have done it 
and they will make sure at least there's going to be result. Okay, there won't be all three blue black. There'll be one which would have probably finished digestion in the time taken for you to do the experiment. So they purposely uh, change the, con the what you call the concentration of your enzyme or concentration of the starch so that you will have a positive result. Okay, what about B? Yellowish brown. Okay, uh, Z Ying, which one? Yellowish brown for which one? Is it for B or is it for C? Cloudy. Uh, sorry, uh, cla cla carries, uh, cloudy would be for protein. If you're testing for albumin, okay, and the albumin has not finished digestion, it will be cloudy. But once it's finished digestion, uh, albumin has been broken down into what they call that uh, smaller units of this amino acid, uh, okay, or smaller units of these peptides, uh, it will be clear. So clear is an indication. If the question is changed, uh, instead of using amylase and starch, they might give you albumin and uh, pepsin. If they give you albumin and pepsin, you don't test with iodine anymore, uh, right? What do you see? You look at the cloudiness or the clear clarity of your solution. Good question. Uh. You, you reminded me to tell you if the question is for protein. Paris. So if it is protein, the suspension of albumin, once it has been hydrolyzed, it will become clear. So that is the indication that your protein has finished digestion, Okay, has been digested. If it's still cloudy, it means digestion is not completed. Okay, so B, yes, Z, it will be yellow or brown. That means it's original color of the iodine. It does not change to blue black because starch has been broken down. Starch has been hydrolyzed. So it's no longer starch. It has become sugar. All right? And for C, alkaline, so not so optimal condition, it will be blue black. Okay. Now, what about Benedict's test after 20 minutes? For A, all right, for A, will there be sugar in your A? Yeah, okay. Uh, Carries, thank you also. Thank you to you for reminding me and also explaining about what happens if there is protein. Uh, they could change the question to become protein. Either normally the pairing is this. If it's starch, they will let you uh, use uh, amylase and starch. If it's albumin, you need to use pepsin. Okay, pepsin, you don't test with iodine. You just, I mean, for the protein, you just see the color change, on it, the, whether it's uh, cloudy or whether it's clear. Okay, so this is blue, yeah? no change. That means the Benedict solution is blue. There is no sugar. It has not been hydrolyzed. The starch is still there. No sugar produced. But for this one, because the starch doesn't, uh, didn't give you a blue-black color, that means your starch has been digested. And once starch, a starch is digest, digested, the product will be sugar. Okay, sugar or we call reducing sugar. So once reducing sugar is tested with Benedict solution, it will be break red precipitate. Okay, don't say other names. Huh? You have to write break red precipitate. Okay, and then for C, alkaline, blue, black, that means starch is still there. No, glucose, uh, no uh, reducing sugar, it will be blue. This blue is a light blue, not the blue black. Blue black is very dark blue. Okay, so here three marks. One for the title with the unit, if there's unit. The second mark is for your MV. And the third mark, everything there. Anything that's wrong, you probably will be wrong for the third mark. Okay, next. Based on observation in the table, state an inference. Okay, a lot of students do not know what's in your inference. Okay, so get it to your brain now. What is inference? They want to uh, inference for A, inference for B. So two marks. So you will expect one mark for A, one mark for B. La. Inference simply means the reason or explanation for observation. So let's look at A. Why do you get blue black? And why do you get Benedict's test? That means either one mark. You can talk about why you get blue black. So inference for A, iodine solution turns blue black because starch is not hydrolyzed. Starch is not digested. You're explaining for this. 
okay? Or because there are two observations, you can also be explaining for this one, okay? So you mentioned Benedict's reagent remains blue, okay? Or there's negative Tessa is still blue because you always have a because because inference explains why you get this observation. Because reducing sugar is not present. That's why it is blue. If the reducing sugar is present, you should have red, red precipitate. Okay, clear? All right. Any questions, just ask me. I'll try to uh, respond to you. Okay, so either one, right? This is my question. I'm not saying this is an SPM scheme. SPM scheme may be different. So the best is always write as complete as you can because you do not know how they want to give you the marks. Okay, it's better to be more comprehensive, more complete your answer so you don't miss any marks here and there. Okay, you want to write both? Write both. Huh? Okay, inference for B. Why is this one yellow, brown, yellow or brown? Why is this one red, red precipitate? Okay, so now B. Inference for B. Why is it yellow or brown? Iodine solution remains yellow because starch has been hydrolyzed. There's no more starch there. Okay, there's no more starch. It did not turn to black. Or you talk about the... What do you call that? The what do you call that? Um, the Benedict's test, huh? The Benedict's test. This one has turned a uh, brick red precipitate. Why? Because reducing sugar is present. Okay. I use reducing sugar because it's general. Because you may not know whether it is glucose or it is maltose. You're not sure, right? Because by right you should get maltose, right? But you don't need to be so specific. As long as you say reducing sugar is good enough. Okay. You must say reducing sugar. Because if it's non-reducing sugar, you will not get red precipitate. You have to put acid there to boil it one more time first, huh? to, to, to break down your uh, non-reducing sugar. Okay, next question. Fill in the table below with variables. Uh, they may ask you about variables. Method to handle. This was in the previous um, KBSM syllabus. It may make a comeback. You don't, who knows? I want to tell you how to answer this question. Okay, three marks. Now, don't forget to fill in the variables first and then fill in the method to handle. So manipulated, what do you change here? Now, manipulated is actually what is changed, you know. So there was a confusion over the, uh, the, the Ujian Amali science for the SPM trial because they said, what is changed? What is changed is actually manipulated. What did you change in order to do this experiment to test the factors? That is change. Okay? What is change is manipulated. Not responding. Responding is not what is change. What is the result? What you see, what you get is responding. What you change is what you do. What do you change in your factor? What factor did you change? Okay, manipulated is your pH. Huh? You change the pH. You have you gave the acid uh, new, uh, alkaline and the neutral condition. Method to handle, okay, in case they ask you this, method to handle, you have to say change. Uh, see the word there? The word is important. Uh, okay, wait now, uh, got frosty. If sucrose, yes, if it's sucrose, you will not get result in Benedict test. It will be blue also because sucrose is a non-reducing sugar. Okay, if it's uh, sucrose, you have to put in acid, then you have to heat up it, then only you test it again with your benedict solution then only you will get break rate precipitate because sucrose is a non-reducing sugar okay so this one you shouldn't get sucrose ah, because starch when you break down you should get maltose all right then amaltose you further break down you get your monomer which is your glucose okay so now change ah, you must use the word change i put in red because this is very is compulsory change what change the ph ah. or you say use what when you say use, you must use the three conditions. You say use hydrochloric acid, what, how many percent, right? Use and, comma, or comma, uh, distilled water and, uh, what is that? Need a sodium hydroxide. When you say use, you must use right now all. If you say change, you don't need to say everything. You just say change the factor only. But if you say use, you have to say all the three conditions three substances that you use okay same uh, write down the substances the name all three of them okay responding what do you want to see what do you want to observe in your experiment 
okay of course the color of the id now the change in the color of id solution or you can see the final the final color the final change in color or presence of reducing sugar because this was the other test you have the benedict test you also have the id test either one they must correspond if you mention change then you must put this answer observe and record very important for you to write the word record whether you say observe or measure or if there's measurement you must put measure right but if you don't write, right never mind observe and measure no need but you must write record record what record the change in the color of id solution or record the absence or presence of starch using what this is also important what do you use to test for starch you use iodine what do you use to test for the absence of presence of reducing sugar you use benedict's test remember i must say using ah uh, so if you are measuring something like the mass okay mass of the potato strip let's say you must say using an electronic uh, balance you must say the measuring the weighing scale must say if you're measuring the length you must say using ruler the device is important here otherwise we don't get this now okay yeah huh? adding acid and heat huh, is to hydrolyze the, yes correct correct got frosty yes you're right because if it's too close you need to you will need to do what you will need to hydrolyze it first that's why you add the acid and then you boil it boil it you will break down your sucrose into glucose and fructose and then after that you test it you will get the positive test for benedict you will have your break rate dissipate. okay so only the only one that doesn't give you the break rate is the sucrose but once you hydrolyze it you will get fructose, uh, fructose and glucose you will get the result first. okay clear huh? right let me go on yes yeah, very good for you to ask you know actually you will ask uh, the other people also get to learn okay so if you're there to ask you learn more actually all right okay let me go on to the third one so what about the fixed variable fixed variable is look back at your apparatus and the list that's given to you what is it that you add into all the three tests also the same what is remain constant you did not change in your three test tube you have the same thing for example the concentration or the volume of amylase okay maybe one ml or one percent uh, that is the three test tube also got volume of ph to medium you all put five ml i think uh, one uh, sorry one ml one ml of sc one ml of the alkaline one ml of the water is the volume then the volume of starch suspension is five ml all the three will have the same okay so it will correspond if you are saying concentration you must pair it with this answer fix the answer to use is fix fix that means you repeat it with the same thing for the other uh test tube that's why you say fix okay fix the volume of endless add uh, you have to mention what is the quantity if you fix the volume of endless you must say one ml if you are talking about volume uh, then your answer will be fix the constant uh, sorry the balik ah uh, the balik yeah uh. wait 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 the balik here this one is this one your concentration fix the concentration volume you must pair with this one fix the concentration of elements at one percent look back at your question go and flip back all right and then ph medium you fix the volume of ph medium at one ml you must mention the value how much did you use and volume of starch suspension you fix the volume of starch suspension at five and now this was given in the question okay that's why you have to use fix for a uh, fixed or constant variable and for manipulated the best answer you can use is change change what change the factor okay yeah next predict you always have a prediction question okay prediction question predict the outcome now outcome can be either uh the color of the iodine or the color of your what do you call that uh the benedict solution uh. but here i prepared the answer is outcome of the experiment the iodine one all right predict the outcome of the experiment for test tube b after 20 minutes that means the end one 
not the beginning. Outcome is always at the end, right? If the experiment is repeated using water bath at 60 degrees Celsius, so you should know that this temperature is too high, right? Your enzyme, whatever enzyme that you know of, yeah, amylase, pepsin, whatever enzyme, they will not function very well at a high temperature, okay? So just now that one is pH. Now you manipulate it by changing the pH, all right? So one mark, there are three marks here. First mark is you have to give the answer first. What is outcome? What will you see? What will you get? So the color of the iodine solution becomes blue-black. Okay, or you, you can say remains blue-black because starch is still there. Even though if you, it's a test tube B, neutral condition, after 20 minutes, it will not be digested completely because the temperature is not suitable now. It is not the pH now. It is the temperature you manipulated. You change the temperature. Okay? First mark is for the answer. The other two marks, make sure you say the reason. When you talk about the reason, you have to go back to your theory. Okay? If your theory is no that, not there, you cannot answer. That's why it, very important prediction question, you have to go back to your theory. Okay, why? It's not I told you. Lah. Because of the temperature. The temperature is not, yes, good. Enzyme is denatured, eh? frosty. Enzyme is denatured. So, E1, that means one of the points there. Starch is not hydrolyzed. Starch is not digested. Starch is not broken down. Okay, why? Why is it not broken down? Because you're explaining this one first. Why is it blue black? Because starch is still there. Why? Because amylase enzyme is denatured or undergoes maturation. Why does it go under maturation? Why, why does it undergo denaturation? Because this temperature, due to high temperature of water bath. Okay, so how do we give marks for this? Three marks. You must have the P first. One mark, wajib, you answer for this one. Then any two explanation. If you only have explanation, your three points E1, E2, E3, but there's no P, you get zero. Huh? Don't expect to give three marks. Huh? Because you did not answer the prediction question. You must have your prediction first before you are given marks for your reason. Reason alone, without the prediction, zero mark. Okay, understand that? Huh? Alright, so make sure you always answer what the question wants first. Then you give your explanation. Okay, last question. Classify the apparatus. Now, this is what a lot of students also get confused. When is it an apparatus? When is it a material? Okay? The simple thing to understand is if it's an apparatus, it's something that you can reuse for another experiment. You don't use it for this experiment and you throw it away. Sometimes it's because it is expensive or it is very, what do you call that? You know, the glassware and all that, all the laboratory glassware, beaker, uh, all this retort stand, all this, you don't throw away. You use it again for another experiment. For material, usually it's only for this experiment, the substances that has to uh, that you have to prepare, the solution, the, the, the enzyme, all this. Because once you use it, you cannot use it again anymore. Either it has been broken down, it has been used up, it has changed already. So all these are discarded, including things that are cheap, right? It could be like rubber band, right? It could be like uh, things that you don't reuse up, like whisky tubing, right? You don't. Uh, use it and then you dry it up and use for an experiment because number one is cheap, number two is very messy, right? So material are things that are perishable, things that are disposable that you throw away. Okay, so look back at your list that is given, the first page usually, and list out all the apparatus that is given in your experiment. Okay, like all this boiling tube, beaker, measuring slinger, test where they're a lot, right? Now try not to miss any of it, lah, right? Tripod, wire gauze, Bunsen burner igniter. Igniter is the permitted api yeah, that you light up your Bunsen burner. Stopwatch, dropper, white towel, thermometer. All right. Now here there are 10. Material will be all this. Lah. You see water, you list out everything. Lah, right. How do we give marks? Usually we see how many you have. So look at the rubric. Yeah? The rubric is the, the, the scheme. Lah, right. So if you have 12A, or I have 12A, yeah? 12A apparatus and 8M, let's say, you have full of three marks okay if you are missing anyone you have 11a but 8m 
right? 11, 8, 8, and you miss out an apparatus, you will not get three. You only give you full if nothing is missing. So if you get 11A and 8M, you will still get two marks. Or 10A and 6M, you will still get two marks. 12A and 7M, you still miss one, you will get two marks. Okay? So if as long as you do not qualify the higher bracket, you will drop down to the next one. So and then let's say the next one, 8A plus 4M, maybe you get one mark only. All right? And then anything less than 8A and 4M, all right, you may get zero marks. Okay, so try to list out. Don't miss out anything. Double check your time. Extra time is going to double check. All right, okay. So this is what I have for you today. This is a simple experiment like I mentioned, something doable in 40 minutes. Don't expect very complicated question. They're also worried. You cannot do it in 40 minutes enough. Many right? people start complaining. Huh? So it'll be something simple, but it's doable. What you need to look out for is the theory. You need to know the theory behind the experiment. If your theory is solid, very good. Whatever they manipulate, whatever they change its time, you'll still be able to do it. Okay, so don't worry so much. It's only 50 marks. You worry more about your paper too, I believe. Okay, you should worry more about paper too. All right, okay, so tomorrow, uh, next week, I'll try to prepare a question from the form five. Okay, so to more or less, I don't have too much time to prepare for you, lab, right? So you can go through other experiments. You may ask me if you need to. I will give you my telegram, uh, what do you call that, my telegram address. Okay, P dot N E. You can contact me if you need to. All right, I'll try to help you. All right. Okay, so everyone, see you next week, hopefully. All right. Uh, where's my slide? So, sorry, where's my slide? Okay, so I'll let you see my next slide. Okay, right. Thank you, every. Thank you, everyone, and I'll see you in my next lesson, which is next week, hopefully. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Have a good evening. Have a good weekend. Bye.